Uh, so now we have Uranus going into the 10th. Now before I go into this, I want to remind you of the mythology of Uranus. Kronos castrated his father. So anytime Uranus and Saturn meet up in a chart, there's fireworks for the most part. So here we have Uranus going into the 10th house. 10th house is the natural home of Saturn. So in, in, the, in the mythological storyline, after, uh, after Saturn, or Kronos, castrated his father, Uranus, let's say uh, he was invited to dinner, that Uranus now was going to go over to Saturn's house for dinner. How awkward do you think that one would be? Well, this is it. Uranus is visiting the house of Saturn. So there's an immediate clash. And I say there's a catapulting experience. You're going to relive that. So cancers, you've lived it. You've been living it since 2009. There was a catapulting experience. There was a coup of some sort. Where whoever was in power all of a sudden felt disempowered. You might have been thrown up into power. You might have had a power grab under the energy. Um, you could have made some very illogical choices. You could have resigned quickly. Maybe a position opened up. Maybe a superior failed, got you know, scammed out of the company somehow, and all of a sudden you're up on top. Uh, you could have snubbed somebody. You could have snubbed a boss. I can think of one uh, a dear friend who just got ousted, ousted out of a position that she securely held for a couple of decades, and all of a sudden she was relegated out to the cubicles. I mean, it was a shocker of a deal at how she dealt with that. It's the upset, the quick upset. It made a story. You could have been shamed. You could have been embarrassed. You could have felt very arrogant and very confident that you were going to go out and do something on your own. You're willing to be more visible. You're willing to take on, uh, uh, take on a task, right? You have to think of what Saturn did to Uranus, right? That you were up for it, that you're going to stretch yourself. And then you could have aligned just with the usual men or bosses. I, I can't explain this, but many, uh, sometimes women, live sometimes, sometimes, a little passively, and they hand these energies off, and the husbands are the ones. The husbands are in a battle for power, or they're debunking somebody and taking over. Can't quite understand how you turn that sometimes when I look at the chart, but I know you're seeing a switch in power. And I'd love to hear some stories for you. We'll have just a couple minutes at the end, but any cancers out there that want to tell a story, I think we'd all be here to hear how this actually uh, could uh, play out. Uh, Jackie's in our audience today, and Jackie's, it's her birthday, so happy birthday, Jackie. But uh, I, I put her chart up here, just a little extra birthday present for her as well. She's got Uranus up in the tent, natally. So here's the question, like it's a test. Does Jackie rock the boat? Yes. Her natal Uranus is in her 10 pounds. Is she a yes person? No, right? Because Uranus is not going to be cordial in the house of Saturn. You can't have someone castrate you and then go, thank you very much. <laughs> what would you like me to do next? Would you like me to stand now? Would you like me to do this? No. So there's going to be a little bit of a rebel energy there. She's got to, and I would say this way, she has no choice. She must hold her. She must hold her own energy. She must maintain her independence just to feel comfortable. But the, what's great about Jackie's chart is there's something called the grand trine. And you certainly can see the triangle that's in place there. This is a natal chart. And what I'm saying is Uranus trines Jupiter, and it trines the moon. And the moon and Jupiter are trying. Oftentimes we say that's like having, it's being lucky in life. You get lucky in life when you have a grand trine in your chart. So that helps tremendously. So instead of saying, oh yeah, Jackie, she's a wild character, and you don't know what she's saying, and you can't take her anywhere, because she'll make a scene, that's not the case. Jackie's very refined. She's got a great clientele around her. She's well respected. She's got a grand trine. And I have to throw this in, because I, you know, I, I'm saying some very flat statements today. And some people have their charts positioned just so nice that they get support. And whenever we see a grand trine, it means the Jupiter, which is all about good luck and fortune, and the moon, which is relationships with people, being emotionally connected to people, supported. So Jackie can get away, and I'm going to say this one, maybe it's impolite, but she gets away with crap sometimes, I suspect. She may come in and say something that if I came in and said, 
people would say, well, that was kind of brutal. You, know, you should have thought twice before you said that. And she says it, and they just may throw their arms around her and give her a hug. You understand? She has a way of, and you could call it schmoozing, but there's an easy energy that goes there. Then one last thing is Uranus, and it's not marked on this chart, but her moon sits at 17 degrees Aries. Uranus is going to be hitting that energy uh, coming up here between now and 2014, so in the next uh, year. And have this influence going over, and that's going to set off and think of it as electrifying this grand trine. And the moon represents uh, uh, in their chart uh, fabulous things, obviously, for travel, but it's also good for her reputation. So there's good things coming. There's hydrogen. Okay, so it's, a, it's kind of cool, but you have to look and sometimes get all the details of this.